Help support the companies that support our community. After I got it sanded, I went ahead and put some walnut oil on it and finished it off with 600. So I just love the way this walnut oil brings out the color of the wood. It just, it makes it look so rich. So I went ahead and finished sanding it with 600. Uh, a couple little things about the, the video. So I do have a sphere jig, but I didn't use it on this um, because it's a, the wood is really punky. So it wasn't gonna cut real clean. I even used a spindle gouge and it still didn't cut it cut it that clean. So if you're gonna do one, I, I would find a nice, nice uh, solid piece of wood. But I just love the way the oil, it just makes it look so rich. So after I got that done, I went ahead and brought down the foot just a little bit before parting it off. After I got it parted off, I went ahead and made a little jam chuck. So this is a dowel and I turned kind of cone shaped on it because when I was hauling it out on the inside, I just made a cone shape going into it. So just turn that down. That non-skid stuff works great for this. So went ahead and brought the tailstock up and then 
just turned down the, the base of it just a little bit and then ran through all the grits again. So that non-skid stuff, it's in there pretty tight. So it actually held it while I was sanding it. it tried to pop out on me one time, but it was uh, it actually worked out really well. So I went ahead and sanded it all the way up to 400 and then finished it off with the walnut oil again at 600. After I got that in, I pulled it off took the jam chuck out of the chuck and replaced the chuck with my sanding disc. So this is a piece of MDF with, uh, I think it's an 80 grit sandpaper. It's a sticky bag, so it's great for flattening things off. And because I wanted this at a little bit of an angle, this worked perfect. The little eraser I'm using, this is a sanding eraser. I use it on the oscillating sander a lot. It just cleans up the sandpaper, so it takes all that the dust and everything out of it. And then just sanded it until I got it to sit at an angle how I wanted. There we go. It's about four and a half inches in diameter, and again, it is out of maple burl. So. Robin asked me if I could make her a pen holder. So we have pens laying all over the desk. So that is what it is. We're gonna clean up the desk. So I asked her to look online, see if she could find something she liked. She found a round one like this, and I said, I can do that. I was, it's just a fun project, quick, easy. It goes right on the desk. So like I was saying in the video, I would find a, a nice solid piece of wood for it. And the other thing is too, so I hollowed it out with the number one hollower, but about halfway down I realized you really don't need to do that. You could just take a Forstner bit and drill into it. So I, I drew, uh, what I did is I had a pin, so I went about three quarters of the way down and I took a pin, measured it. When I got about three quarters of the way in, I stopped hollowing it out. But I just kind of actually kind of made a cone shape, but you really don't need to do that if you just took a Forstner bit, drilled three quarters of the way in, or whatever size pin you have, it would work perfect and it would speed up the whole process. But it was a fun project. I have never made a, a pin holder before. All right, if this is your first time here, we have a ton of videos, um, everything from educational videos to you know fun, fun ones with music. So click on the channel, there's tons of great stuff. And we also have another channel where we do uh, Nile stuff. So we have videos over there. We took videos from the frequently asked questions and I did a short video on each of those and everything from how to use a bottle stopper mandrel to uh, different finishes you can put on it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the subscribe and like button and we will see you next week. Take care.